So we're going to finish Letting in the Jungle from the Jungle Books. Basically, Mowgli heard a story about how Hati the Elephant uh, took some revenge on some people and destroyed the area that they lived in, killed all the people. He doesn't want the people in the village to die, he just wants it destroyed, and that's what's going on right now. Uh, we just heard that Bagheera went in and killed all the ponies, dragged their carcasses out into the street. So we'll wrap it up and we'll do the poem at the end, too. The villagers had no heart to make fires in the fields that night, so Hati and his three sons went gleaning among what was left, and where Hati gleans, there is no need to follow. The men decided to live in their stored cor seed corn, to live on their stored seed corn until the rains had fallen, and then to take work as servants till they could catch up with the lost year. But as the grain dealer was thinking of his well-filled crates of corn and the prices he would levy at the sale of it, Hottie's sharp tusks were picking out the corner of his mud house and smashing open the big wicker chest, leaped with cow dung where the precious stuff lay. When the last loss was discovered, it was the Brahmin's turn to speak. He had prayed to his own gods without answer. It might be, he said, that unconsciously the village had offended some one of the gods of the jungle, for beyond doubt the jungle was against them. So they sent for the head man of the nearest tribe of wandering Gons, little wise and very black hunters living in the deep jungles whose fathers came from the oldest race in India, the aboriginal owners of the land. They made the Gond welcome with what they had, and he stood on one leg, his bow in his hand, and two or three poisoned arrows struck through the, his top knot, looking half afraid, half contemptuously at the anxious villagers in their ruined fields. They wished to know whether his gond, the old gonds, the, whether his gods, the old gods, were angry with them, and what sacrifices should be offered. The gonds said nothing, but picked up a trail of the carilla, but picking up a trail of the carilla, the vine that bears the bitter wild gourd, and laced it to and fro across the temple door in the face of the staring red Hindu language. Or the, out of the staring red Hindu image. Then he pushed with his hand in the open air along the road to Kanahuara and went back to his jungle and watched the jungle people drive, drifting through it. He knew that when the jungle moves, only white men can hope to turn it aside. There was no need to ask his meaning. The old gourd would grow where they had worshipped their god, and, and the sooner they saved themselves, the better. But it is hard to tear a village from its mooring. They stayed on as long as any summer food was left to them, and they tried to gather nuts in the jungle, but shadows with glaring eyes watched them and rolled before them, even at midday. And when they ran back afraid to their walls on the tree trunks they had passed not five minutes before, the bark would be stripped and chiseled with the stroke of some great taloned paw. The more they kept to their village, the bolder grew the wild things that gambled and bellowed on the grazing grounds by the, by the Wangunga. They had no time to patch and plaster the rear walls of the empty byres that backed on to the jungle. The wild pig trampled them down, and the knotty rooted vines hurried after and threw their elbows over the new-worn ground and the coarse grass bristled behind the vines like the, like the lances of a goblin army following a retreat. The unmarried men ran away first and carried the news far and near that the village was doomed. Who could fight, they said, against the jungle or the gods of the jungle? When the very village cobra had left his hole in the platform under the people tree, so their little, com so their little commerce with the outside world shrunk as the trodden paths across the open grew fewer and fainter. At last, the nightly trumpetings of Hati and his three sons Excuse me. Yeah. ceased to trouble them, for they had no more to be robbed of. The crop on the ground and the seed in the ground had been taken. The outlying fields were already losing their shape, and it was time to throw themselves on the charity of the English at Kaniwara. Native fashion... They delayed their departure from one day to another till the first rains caught them and the unmended roofs let in a flood, and the grazing ground stood ankle-deep 
and all life came on with a rush after the heat of the summer. Then they waded out, men, women, and children, to the blinding hot rain of the mooring, but turned naturally for one farewell look at their homes. They heard, as the last burdened family fled through the gate, a crash of falling beams and thatch behind the walls. They saw a shiny, snaky, black trunk lifted for an instant, scattering sodden thatch. It disappeared, and there was another crash, followed by a squeal. Hottie had been plucking off the roofs of the huts, you pluck water lilies, and a rebounding beam had pricked him. He needed only this to unchain his full strength. For, of all things in the jungle, the wild elephant enraged is the most wantonly destructive. He kicked backwards at a mud wall and crumbled, that crumbled at the stroke, and crumbling melted to yellow mud under the torrent of rain. Then he wheeled and squealed and tore through the narrow streets, leaning against the huts right and left, shivering the crazy doors and crumpling up the eaves, while his three sons raged behind as they raged at the sack of the fields of Butterpore. The jungle will swallow these shells, said a quiet voice in the wreckage. It is the outer wall that must lie down, said Mowgli, with the rain sluicing over his bare shoulders and arms, leaped back from a wall that was set that was setting like a tired buffalo. All in good time, panted Hati. Oh, but my tusks were red at butcher poor. On the outer to the outer wall, children, with a head together now, the four pushed side by side, the outer wall bulged, split and fell, and the villagers, dumb with horror, saw the savage clay streaked heads of the wreckers in the ragged gap. Then they fled, houseless and foodless, down the valley, as their village, shredded and tossed and trampled, uh, excuse me, melted behind them. A month later, the place was a dimpled mound, covered with soft green young stuff, and by the end of the rains there was a roaring jungle in full blast on the spot that had been under plow not six months before. That's the end of the story, and here is the poem that accompanies it, Mowgli's Song Against People. I will let loose against you fleet-footed vines. I will call in the jungle to stamp out your lines. The roof shall fade before it, the house beams shall fall, and Carella, the bitter Carella, shall cover all. In the gates of these your councils my people shall sing, in the doors of these your garner, your garners the bat folk shall cling, and the snake shall be your watchman by the hearthstone unswept. For the Carella, the bitter Carella, shall fruit where ye slept. Ye shall not see my strikers, ye shall hear them and guess. By night before lo the moonrise I will send for my kess. And the wolf shall be your herdsman. By a landmark, by a landmark removed. For the Carella, the bitter Carella, shall seed where ye loved. And I believe that. Oh, no. I will reap your fields before you at the hands of a host. Ye shall gleam behind my reapers for the bread that is lost. And the deer shall be your oxen. By a headland untitled, for the Carella, the bitter Carella, shall leaf where ye build. I have united against you the club footed vines. I have sent in the jungle to swamp out your lines. The trees, the trees are on you. The house beams shall fall, and the Carella, the bitter Carella, shall cover you all. And that is the end.